This video will discuss activation energy in chemical kinetics. So for many reactions, our reaction rate, V of T, is highly dependent on temperature. So empirically, what's been discovered is that the change in the natural log of the rate constant with respect to temperature is equal to a quantity Ea divided by the gas constant times temperature squared where this quantity Ea is what is called the activation energy. So what we're going to assume is that this activation energy is a fairly constant versus temperature. So if we multiply both sides by dt, then we have the rate constant dependence over here, and we have the temperature dependence over here. So integrating both sides here, if we do a, an indefinite integral, we have the natural log of the rate constant plus some constant c equals minus the activation energy divided by gas constant times temperature. So if we take uh, both sides to the E power, take both sides to the power of E, what we can get is rearrange this equation to the rate constant equals E to the minus constant C times E to the minus Ea over RT. But since this constant C was just some arbitrary constant to begin with, e to the c or e to the minus c is also just some other arbitrary constant. So we'll redefine that constant as a value that we're going to call a. So here we can tell from this empirical relationship that our rate constant equals some constant times the exponential of negative activation energy divided by gas constant times temperature. So this equation, which spells out the temperature dependence of our rate constant for reactions, is called the Arrhenius equation, first discovered by the physicist and or chemist, depending on your perspective, Arrhenius. Okay, so the pieces of this are, as I've been discussing, K, the rate constant, in green I have highlighted. Purple I have highlighted this constant A is called the pre-exponential factor. And then this quantity Ea is what we would call the activation energy. So if we do some plots here of the reaction rate versus, versus uh, temperature, we know that the, all the concentration of our reactants isn't changing. The order of the, that reaction isn't changing. So what's changing as we change the temperature is actually the rate constant in this rate. So that value starts off at zero Kelvin at basically zero. Reactions really can't proceed at zero Kelvin because nothing is moving. So as we increase the temperature, there's some kind of exponential increase in the speed of the reaction. For standard reactions, that starts to go up and increase exponentially. It reaches some maximum, and then it starts to top out eventually at some very high temperature at some finite value. For other reactions, such as explosive reactions, you can imagine that you go up and then you reach some threshold temperature, and above that temperature, our reactants just happen to explode. So the rate gets very, very fast, uh, and then you really can't conduct that experiment at higher temperatures, because once you heat it up to that threshold temperature, your reactants will explode. Alternatively, you might have enzyme reactions, like in biochemistry, where you have these intricately folded proteins which carry out um, some specific biological reaction. And the, those proteins have to fold in a very specific way, which depends on some weak non-covalent interactions in the protein. So as the temperature gets higher and higher, it becomes increasingly likely that you're going to break up those interactions in the protein and this enzyme will unfold. So after certain threshold temperatures, you might start increasing your rate of reaction, but once you get too hot, the enzyme starts to unfold and the reaction cannot occur because your enzyme is now unfolded and is useless. All right, also implied by the structure of this equation is if we plot the natural log of our rate constant versus the inverse of temperature, we will get a straight line. So if we have a, if we measure the React, if we measure the reaction rate at various temperatures, derive the rate constant at various temperatures, plot that out, the slope of that line is going to be the negative activation energy 
divided by the gas constant. And our intercept of that line is going to be the natural log of our pre-exponential factor. So if we plot out those, if we plot out um, log k versus 1 over t for our reaction at a series of temperatures, we can in fact derive what the values of our activation energy and our pre-exponential factor are there. So if we have some activation energy which is low, we're going to have a slope which is has greater in magnitude, but since it's negative, it's going down faster. Higher activation energy, higher actor, I believe I have these reversed. Yes, larger activation energy should be sloping down faster. Yes, these should all be greater than signs. Let's reverse that. There we go. So as the energy of activation gets bigger, the slope of this is going to become more negative and slope away faster from log of A as our reaction rate is changing faster uh, with respect to the inverse temperature. There, the natural log of our reaction rate changes faster with respect to the inverse temperature.